Rivia. Population 1,234. In that, 253 non-humans. September the 25th, 1268. A riot erupts. A massacre ensues. Streets run with the blood of elves and dwarves. One person finds the courage to face the raging crowd. During the rioting, 76 non-humans perish, including the witches Geralt of Rivia. Stabbed in the chest with a pitchfork by a man of whom we know only that his name was Rob, and he owed three crowns at the local tavern. Yennefer of Vengerberg dies trying to heal the witcher. The bodies of Geralt and the sorceress are taken away by a mysterious young girl with ashen hair. Their place of internment remains unknown. I remember. Rivia. Yennefer. Yennefer told me that Ciri has departed for good. She inhabits another world and is happy there. Before she left this one, she gave us the Isle of Avaloch, our island. We stopped counting time. The people believe that the wraiths of the wild hunt are immortal. They race across the heavens, gripping in their bony hands swords, their lightning bolts. They take away mortals, never expanding their cavalcade of spectral riders. They burned the orchard and the house. In their armored boots, they trampled our island. And they made off with Yennefer. I had to get her back. Return to reality. Return to the Witcher's path. September 13th, 1269, the Ravine of the Hydra. Following the peace of Sintra, 53 officers of the Vryhead Brigade were brought here and executed, their throats cut. The elves' bodies were dropped into the chasm. I don't know what the riders of the hunt were looking for. November 23rd, 1269, Sintra, the village of cold water, and another victim of the hunt. An 11-year-old boy, his parents didn't even ask if he had a chance. I'm tired. February 24th, 1270. A high pass in the Armouche Mountains. An Imperial Manticore, one of the world's oldest and deadliest monsters. I used to feel excitement at moments like this. Now the beast is only an obstacle on my way. Its meat and hot blood will help me survive this icy hell. May 30th, 1270. The Ruga River. The hunt continues to race south. Since I've been following them, they've taken 23 individuals all between the ages of 10 and 20. All except for Yennefer. July 25th, 1270. The forests of Angren. No mighty mortal, no heap of meat or strong man can parry the strike of the slizzard's tail. Letho couldn't either, but by some miracle he survived. I helped him. After all, witchers on the path should help each other. He had two comrades, brother witchers from the school of the Viper. The hunt continued south, and Letho of Gullet knew where it was going. He knew where the hellish chase would end. Winter Solstice 1270, Middenvern, the Night of Magic. Letho wasn't lying, the hunt had stopped. At the hanged man's tree, the spectral riders selected from among those they had taken. Yennefer was among them. A wraith cannot be killed, only driven away. Every witcher knows that. Yet the riders fell beneath the blows of our witcher's blades. Crimson blood flowed from under their dead men's armor. We could not kill them all. They were simply too many, a stalemate. He was different from all other elves. There was no shame in his gaze. He had never suffered persecution. He had endured no massacres. 
Humans had not taken his land. This elf was not of this world. He was an invader. We struck a deal. My soul for that of Yennefer. He agreed without hesitation. Five years after the Great War, the Northern Kingdoms continued to suffer. Rivers flowed red with elven blood, and life was cheaper than a fistful of coppers. The world needed a hero. They said he arrived on the wings of a storm to help the downtrodden. They said he'd gone mad and died. They called him the Sword of Destiny. They said he returned, for only evil can vanquish evil. In truth, Geralt of Rivia reappeared, barely breathing and bereft of memory, near the Witcher's citadel of Caer Morhen. The wild hunt, War's Omen, sped across the sky, while in Vizima, a cow gave birth to a two-headed calf. All other claims are legend. At Caer Morhen, Geralt recovered, yet even his one-time lover, the powerful sorceress Triss Merigold, could not restore his memory. The calm would not last. Armed brigands led by the sorcerer Azar Javid and the professor, a killer for hire, attacked the citadel. Though bandit blood stained Caer Morhen's walls, the attackers made off with their prize. The secrets of Witcher mutation, concealed for centuries, disappeared in a flash of magic. The Witchers set off on a search, as tradition ordained, to the four corners of the world. Geralt of Rivia went south to the Temerian capital of Vizima, where he'd once cured a princess of a curse. When the cat is away, King Foltes was nowhere in sight and Vizima was in turmoil. The Order of the Flaming Rose, Grand Master Jacques de Aldersberg at its head, pursued its crusade against non-humans. With whips and chains, swords and fire, the Order's ruthless steel-clad knights hunted all those they deemed strange for their ears or their stature. In Vizima, the Witcher picked up the bandit's trail. He learned they were members of Salamandra, a secret criminal guild. Brutal in their methods, they dealt in fistech, murder, and extortion. Geralt didn't know these were means to a darker girl. As the Witcher hunted Salamandra, he was drawn into the conflict between the Scoyatel rebels and the Order of the Flaming Rose. The two sides finally clashed in the swamp near Vizima. Knights of the Order and Scoyatel fought a bloody battle, while Geralt faced Azar Javid and the Professor. The mage felled Geralt with powerful spells leaving him as fodder for swamp monsters. Triss saved the witcher's life. He recovered under her nurturing hand. She introduced him to powerful politicians and influential merchant guildsmen. The mood in the city was tense. Confined to ghettos, non-humans spoke openly of mutiny. There was no sign of the king. Geralt found allies for his struggle against Salamandra. The witcher resumed his hunt. He destroyed Salamandra's secret fistet factories and killed the Professor. The Witcher found Azar Javid's hideout. This time Geralt was prepared and no spells the renegade mage threw at him could stop his sword. Yet the stolen Witcher's secrets were in the hands of another, Jacques de Aldersburg, Grand Master of the Order. Provoked by the knights, non-humans rebelled. De Aldersburg responded, releasing his greater brothers, the horrific result of his experiments with the Witcher's mutagens. Vizima was in flames and dying. Enter Foltest and his army. The king summoned the Witcher and demanded the head of the Grand Master, a monster in human form and a usurper. The Witcher set out in search of Jacques de Aldersburg and the stolen Witcher's secrets. The Grand Master plunged Geralt into his vision of the future, where the Wolf's Blizzard would destroy the world and kill all, no matter their race or abilities. De Aldersburg wished to create superhumans, ensuring the survival of the human race. It was a vision Geralt rejected. He drove his sword through the Grand Master's heart and did well. For the vision was naught but a madman's nightmare. They say the King of the Wild Hunt appeared to claim De Aldersburg's soul. They say the Grand Master was an evil man, for the Wild Hunt comes only for the filthiest and most vile. They say only evil can vanquish evil, but those are only legends. In truth, Geralt recovered the Witcher's secrets, and Vizima proclaimed him a hero. Yet life is no fairy tale. One story ends, another begins. As the King handed the Witcher his reward, an assassin attacked. His cat-like eyes and medallion were unmistakable, but that is another story.